Literally all the comments are gonna be like, go back home to America. And it's like, no, thank you. <laughs> You're stuck with us. <laughs> like Australians watching this, does this like terrify you? Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Ashley here and we have a very special guest today. Hello guys. So good to be here. It's so nice to finally be able to collab with Ashley. You guys have been asking for this for a long time. Yeah, literally my comments were like, oh my gosh, do you know kind of Australian? Do you know kind of Australian? I was like, yes. I'm like, do you know Ashley? Do you know Ashley? I get that all the time in my comments. And I'm like, we've been talking, we're waiting, we're working it yeah, out. We live in different states. We're gonna figure this out one day. Don't worry, guys. Yeah, and she's like, oh, will you, will you be in Sydney anytime soon? And I was like, well, <laughs> I could. <laughs> So if you guys are familiar with Caitlin's content, she does a lot of America versus Australia, culture differences. She does a lot of really cool sit down videos going on all different topics. So we are going to be chatting about five culture differences from Australia and the States, as well as some lovely back and forth commentary with <laughs> Caitlin being in New South Wales and me being down in Tassie. So we've already done five over on her channel, so make sure to go ahead there after this video and all her stuff will be down below but we're gonna do five more on this channel so to start off the absolutely non-heated topics the first one on my list is australian slang which <laughs> literally <laughs> sigh which i've chatted about a bit on my channel i've done a couple quizzes i'm pretty sure you've done some fun ones too mm -hmm. of testing the australian slang which I've never heard most of the ones on the lists anyway, at least the ones that I've done. Yeah. I'm like, I've, and I've asked it like my fellow Australians, and they're like, we don't say that. Yeah, I feel like those types of lists purposely pull out like the most ridiculous, exaggerated, like, because they want to get the clicks. Ones. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're talking like random phrases that might have been used in like the 70s or something. <laughs> I feel like most of these quizzes are just so ridiculous. Like, crikey. It's not <laughs> crikey. <laughs> Oh my god, we were just talking about how crikey is not a word anybody ever really uses. At over least in Australia. seriously. Yeah. At least seriously. Ironically, they will you might hear it. You might hear it from like some older people in Australia. You might hear it after a few drinks at the pub or something like that. Wait, do you get asked if you're Canadian before you're asked if you're American? Yes. Oh my gosh, I take it as such a compliment. <laughs> Do you? Yes, but I heard, well, see, I used to take it as a compliment, and now I've heard that people will ask that even if they suspect you're American, because if you're Canadian, and you ask a Canadian if they're American, they get very, very offended. So now I'm like, okay, you're asking me because you, you probably don't actually think I'm Canadian. You just don't want to accidentally offend me if I end up being Canadian. Okay. Whereas, that makes me so sad, because I was thinking it was like such a compliment. I was like, you don't think I'm a loud, obnoxious American? That's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> literally broke my heart because it's like i'm sure you feel like regardless of what you do here you'll always be like all that american oh yeah it feels like as soon as somebody like knows you're american like they automatically have you pegged under that stereotype and you stereotypes. have to like unprove the stereotypes yeah, yeah yeah i i completely completely feel mm -hmm. that um but, yeah yeah i feel like the american slang words are what will get us every time like if we go to the gas station <laughs> I have an appointment in the afternoon. I don't always say Arvo. I still type out afternoon when I'm at I've work never sometimes. used Arvo on ironically. Like mm -hmm. I use it sarcastically sometimes, but I always mm -hmm. use it in quotes so that people know that I'm not being serious mm -hmm. because I still don't understand where the V comes from. <laughs> Fair point. If anybody knows why there's a V, some people are like, oh well it has to do with the way like some people say it and this and that and I'm like I but even mm -hmm. in like the most you know, bogan accent, like it doesn't sound mm -hmm. like a V. No, like if it was an F, that might make sense, like Arvo or something, but even then that still sounds yeah. weird. Or have you heard of, what is it? Oh, there's like another slang for afternoon. Is it S apostrophe Arvo or something? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, like Sarvo? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, got an appointment Sarvo. Yeah, what does that mean again? This Arvo, so this afternoon. <sighs> yeah, I know. Because there's like slang, and then there's like <laughs> slang for the slang. But so then it just goes down a rabbit hole, mm -hmm. and then by the end of it, I'm like, I, I'm clocked out of this conversation. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I feel like it can easily lead to some miscommunications oh, if yeah. people don't know what you're talking about. I, even just some American-isms I've noticed tend to really confuse some Aussies. Like, I remember... Oh my gosh, wait, an Americanism. I want to hear what you think. But what's an Americanism that you so, noticed? So, like, you know how, like, teams will huddle together or something, and right before they're like, go to go play some sports, I'm like, you break, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was talking to my partner and maybe this isn't something that's that common. I thought it was really common in American movies, but maybe it's not. Yeah. Um, we were talking on the phone one day and we were like, okay, he's going to go. We were long distance at the mm -hmm. time. So like he was going to go to the kitchen, get a drink. I was going to go to the kitchen and I was like, okay. And break. He's like, what, you need to take a break from me? Like we were talking for oh like 10 God. minutes. I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. Oh, wait, wait, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Small little things like that, where if you don't know the context it's coming from, for Americans and Australians, then it could really cause some... Yeah, issues. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but, like, there's definitely been instances where I'm just, like... It's, like, a mix of, like, different slang, but then also with behavior, and then it's just, like, mm -hmm. wait. Yeah. Like, it, it's hard to explain, but then it happens, and you're like, oh, right, completely mm -hmm. forgot about that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. There's another one that I actually have with one of my American coworkers. So over here in Australia, people aren't as into labels when it comes to like boyfriends and girlfriends and husband and wives and stuff. Yeah, like if that. you said partner mm -hmm. in the states, like people would be like, "Wait, what?" People, if you say partner in the states, people automatically assume that you're LGBT. Mm -hmm. Like partner is something mm -hmm. that is like part of that LGBT community over in the states, whereas in the states we're more into labels. Like I would have previously referred to people as like my boyfriend mm -hmm. or my husband or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But over here, just saying partner kind of covers all the bases. Mm -hmm. And I remember- I honestly think mm -hmm. it makes a lot more sense because you're just like, oh, my partner. And it's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't even matter about, you know, how you identify. Mm -hmm. It's just understood. Yeah. Whereas in the States, it's very like my girlfriend, mm -hmm. my boyfriend, my this, my mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Whereas partner is like very mm -hmm. inclusive. Yeah, I've really confused one of my coworkers before because I didn't talk about my partner Mark that much at work. This was when we'd only been dating for like three months at this point. Mm -hmm. And I told one of the lawyers on my old job, I'm like, oh yeah, my partner's supposed to come over next week. And he looks at me, he's like, I didn't know you were a lesbian. Oh <laughs> like my, my partner God. Mark, he's like, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like it wasn't a big thing or anything. Like they didn't make a big deal out of yeah. it. It's just like, I didn't know. I think he was worried that he offended me that he didn't know, oh. even though I'm not. See, so. like, it's like things like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So second is having Christmas in summer over here in Australia. So you haven't experienced Christmas over here yet, have you? No. Wait, did you move right before Christmas? Yeah. Oh, that must have been so weird. It is. So I've actually been lucky enough to experience two Christmases over here in Australia. Okay, I've... way to rub it in. It's fine. Oh, yeah. So in 2019, I did the whole cliche thing. It was a gorgeous day. It wasn't like rains like we're having cliche this summer. Rain. Uh, going to Bondi, <laughs> Bondi Beach on Christmas. In the summer, it was so busy, obviously, because it's a huge tourist spot to go mm -hmm. on Christmas. But there are people on the beach in Santa hats. Like, oh, it's so spicy. Busy. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Like having these really light foods, having like a nice little picnic. You'd almost think it's like a 4th of July-ish party on Christmas. Whereas like for me, just the seasons in general mess me up. Like even now, like it's just still so weird to me that it's winter. Yeah. Whereas like all of my family and friends, it's summer and they're all complaining about how hot it is. Even just like the other seasons, like having fall in, sorry, autumn. My goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, early in the year, mm -hmm. I'm like, that's so weird. And then how it coincides with different like school and university breaks too. Yeah. Like the timing of semesters is so different. Mm -hmm. So it's like a culmination of all of it where I'm like, wait, that like really adds up. Yeah, it really does. And having so many friends and family back home and being connected on social media, mm -hmm. seeing everybody's pictures from the 4th of July Mm -hmm. was so bizarre because of course it's the 4th of July. Everyone's mm -hmm. out in swimsuits and they're having barbecues and talking mm -hmm. about how hot it is. And I'm sitting here in my house like all bundled Literally up on the hoodie. Like, hey look, it is in fact the 4th of July. Maybe yeah. I'll go make a hot dog and try to warm myself up. I was posting a lot of stuff on my Instagram like all the pretty like changing colors like earlier in the year. And then everyone in the States is like posting like the flowers blooming. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like because like I think like especially in the states like a lot of people I don't know if you have the same experience but like primarily travel in the northern hemisphere yeah like you primarily stick to the states Europe maybe like Caribbean Mexico mm -hmm. Canada but it's like primarily northern hemisphere mm -hmm. whereas here it's like you travel in the southern hemisphere but then there's also people that go in the northern hemisphere so mm -hmm. it's like you get to experience both, whereas like oh, most people I know have like never been in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh yeah, I don't know a single person, like in my American family and friends and whatnot, who's actually been to 
the southern hemisphere. I know mm-hmm. plenty of people have been to Europe and Canada yeah. and the Caribbean islands, mm-hmm. but you figure 85% of the world's population actually lives in the northern hemisphere. I love how she's just fitting facts right now. Honestly, you can <laughs> say whatever number you want and I would just nod my head and be like, yep. The vast majority of the world's population lives in the northern hemisphere. And if you think about like American movies and whatnot, mm-hmm. think about how many Christmas songs are about cold, snowy, chilly That's Christmases. That's true. And they still play those here in Australia, even though it's warm. Yeah, like, oh, um, what something that was interesting is, one of the last times I was in New Zealand, it was spring there, but the one Starbucks there had a pumpkin spice latte because it was fall in the States. And so I guess, because I was like so mm-hmm. confused and I was just like, wait, they have like fall seasonal beverages in the spring, because mm-hmm. it's the spring in the Southern Hemisphere. But I guess it's just because that's when they produce it. So mm-hmm. they just like send it out. So then it's like people in the Southern Hemisphere are like sipping on you know, pumpkin spice and apple cider or whatever <laughs> in the spring. That is so weird. And they're probably so like, what is going on? <laughs> so the third one on the list is tapping into something that I noticed specifically when you're in an Uber or in a taxi and how much safer I feel here as a woman. Whereas in the States, like if I get into an Uber or some sort of taxi and say the driver starts talking to me I immediately like tense up and like get really scared and I'm like checking the map and making sure that like we're going the right way and like I just get really tense and anxious whereas here they're just friendly and like that's a custom for you to get into your uber and then chat your life story Mm -hmm. like there was an uber driver when I lived in New Zealand and literally convinced him to move to a different city (laughs) in our like 10 minute uber drive (laughs) And it was so chill. Whereas here, like, I don't know how you feel about it, but like... Oh, yeah. I feel like it is so much more relaxed here. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's different expectations. So if you're having a a small chit-chat with your Uber driver or something here, that's normal. It might even be encouraged and whatnot. But over in the States, there's always this feeling as a woman where if you're too friendly to somebody, they're going to think that you are flirting. They might take Mm -hmm. it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if you are in a car with a stranger, especially in the back seat, because you never get in the front seat of an Uber in the Mm -mm. States, it's always in the back. Mm -hmm. So if you have things like child protection locks or something, that's always scared me. Like Mm -hmm. I'm always friendly, but I cut conversations off short, sweet. There are times where I'd actually call up Mark on WhatsApp on my phone if I've had that like gut feeling that something was a little bit off about the Uber driver or something like that, mm-hmm. just so there was somebody on my phone, like not in the quite a witness. Hmm? In the States. In the States. States, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I've never had that problem over here in Australia. I feel like a lot of the Uber drivers are very friendly for the most part, mm-hmm. but they never take it too far. They never mm-hmm. try to flirt with you. They never really try yeah, to take advantage of Yeah, to put you in like situation. an uncomfortable situation. Like I've just found it's very like small talk, like, yes. and it's like very mm-hmm. normal and comfortable. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the States, like there's just been so many times where I'm like, oh my God, like, am I going to die? Like what's going to happen to me? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I feel a like a really crappy feeling. Yeah. Like there's this heightened sense of not quite worry. I can't think of the right word for it, but there's this heightened sense of like adrenaline. Kind of like you need to be aware of your surroundings. Oh, they need yeah. to be cautious all the mm-hmm. time, like this heightened sense of caution, I guess, mm-hmm. whenever you're out in the US alone. Um, yeah, like I don't know what you were taught growing up, but I was always like, never have your earphones in, never have your phone out, like this and that. Like it could be an opportunity for someone to steal it or take advantage of you. Oh, see, I was always taught the other way around have your phone out, but make sure that the screen's unlocked so you can hit. Um, emergency well that makes sense yeah. right away if you need to but only keep one ear button in your yeah never your yeah in. yeah never have both in mm-hmm. and never have your hood up like i've also heard always keep your hair like in a ponytail or a bun or something so that way it's a lot tougher to grab keep your keys in between your fingers was always a thing. oh yeah like a lot of a lot of women in the states will have on their key ring like a some sort of weapon mm-hmm. or something that they can use or yeah like just have your key yeah like australians watching this does this like terrify you or because this is like unfortunately quite normal, normal. <laughs> yeah so i wonder what it actually uh, yeah i really like, really yeah. interested to hear what you all have to say in the comments yeah. and you can hear like we're talking about it really casually yeah this really is how really people casually talk about it in the states like this yeah is unfortunately that is the normal mm-hmm. rather than just general safety yeah general safety concerns safety. Yeah, yeah like i living in hobart i've never not felt safe 
Yeah. And I grew up in a really, really rough neighborhood in Philly. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a bad neighborhood, you guys. Yeah, there's uh, some scary neighborhoods in Philly. Like, even during the day, I would not feel safe walking around, like, by myself sometimes. I was always taught to make myself look as ugly as possible. Well, yeah, because if you look too desirable, then it'll be a target. Yeah. So, like, pajama pants, baggy hoodie, baggy shirt. Yeah. I would never wear anything short. I would never wear anything even slightly revealing. No. Even, like, to this day, like, mm -hmm. if I'm out and I'm alone, I'm like, no. Like, I can't look desirable because that puts me at risk. Yeah. And it's something that I haven't noticed over here. Not just necessarily in how, like, I dress or how I behave, but seeing how other women in general are. Like, they, there's not that same need to feel like you need to shrink down to as little as possible and not be noticed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really depressing. <laughs> I hope your next one's like more uplifting because now we're like killing the mood. <laughs> Fourth on this list is bank transfers. Oh my god. This freaked me out the first couple times I've seen people do bank transfers over here because Growing up in the States, we were always taught you don't give out your nope. account number. You don't give out your Even ASP to like number. go on your own banking info mm -hmm. on app or the website when you log in, you have to go through a bunch of steps even just to remotely see your account number, mm -hmm. your BSB, like everything. Like it's even difficult as the account holder to get that info. So when someone was just like, oh, you just give me your account info, I was like, what? So one of the first times I had to deal with this was actually the very first job I had in Australia. Mm -hmm. I quit after a week. It was a terrible job. They had paid me out till the end of the month, which is really, really common here to pay you for a full month, even though you haven't finished that second half of the month yet. Mm -hmm. So I had to pay them back for that two weeks. So Wait, I've they never heard of that before. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, and my current job does it too. I get paid once a month on the 15th. Um, so technically I've already worked that first half, but mm -hmm. they pay me in advance for the next two weeks. I get paid weekly and even that is bizarre to me. Yeah. So it is pretty common to get paid weekly too. Mark does get paid weekly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it just depends on the structure that the company wants to use. Interesting. So they're like, hi, can I have my money back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're like, okay, well, if you're leaving now, you need to pay us for this two weeks. We already paid you. Here's our account details. I'm like, oh my God, a multi-million dollar firm just gave me their bank details. Holy. Yeah. You're like, what do I do with this? Yeah. So I actually need a mark to kind of like explain to me yeah. a little bit like no, that's that's normal There's a thing like literally when I go on my bank account app for my Australian bank account Where it's literally like message your it's like a prompt like message your info to a friend Like really? that's yeah, like it's literally like copy and paste it mm -hmm. lists it all out and Like wow. that's bizarre <laughs> to me whereas like mm -hmm. I'm used to Venmo yeah. I, do, I don't know if you use Venmo a lot. I love Venmo. I used to pay my old landlord on Venmo. Yeah, like a lot of people just use Venmo, which is technically a third party. Yeah. And I brought this up before and people were like, oh, well, you're, then you're comfortable giving it to a third party. And I'm like, well, that's a fair point. But like, even then I'm like, just we were always taught, like, hold tight to your banking info. Yeah, like your banking info is as important as like your social security number. Yeah, and literally. Like you never let anybody have any of that. Literally. Yeah. So giving people your banking account information is actually very common over here in Australia. and Not in the States at all? No. Nice. We, we lightened up the mood. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's <laughs> a little better. And number five on the list, I feel like is also pretty light. Lighthearted. That's you know, right. Gotta, gotta end gotta, on a light note. Gotta end on a light note. We're yeah. like in, deep in the middle of like the tragedies of America. <laughs> is at least I've noticed in academia setting, and I know I chatted with you and you also realized it, is... Uh, well, one, saying the word academia, that's very Australian. <laughs> you never hear academia no, over in the States. It's you, so, like, pretentious. Yeah, it sounds very pretentious, mm -hmm. so the fact that that's, like, normal here is... Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. In academia here is just the power dynamic of, like, student-teacher is a lot more chill. And, you know, starting my degree here, like, the fact that literally I have my professor's phone numbers and... I call them by their first name, like they don't want to get called doctor, blah, blah, blah. Whereas most of my professors in the States were insulted if you didn't address them, doctor, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it's just different, like just the culture in Australia is just a lot more chill, which mm -hmm. obviously makes sense, but mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I work with doctors as part of my full-time job, and if there's a doctor who we work with, even semi-regularly, it's not somebody I'm just sending a one-off email to, using their first name is actually really, really common over here as mm -hmm. well. So calling somebody Joe or Jill or something like that mm -hmm. is actually really, really common, even if somebody is a doctor, a professor. Mm -hmm. So it's a very relaxed power dynamic over here, mm -hmm. which is not something you would ever see in the States. I remember professors in college getting mad if you mm -hmm. call them professor instead of doctor because oh they my have gosh. earned that doctor. Yeah, they're literally like, we've earned the doctor title. Like they get really insulted. Mm -hmm. Cause even professor is like a very formal way to address someone. And then they're like, no, I'm doctor. Yeah. Or like even from the get go, like my professors will just call me Ash, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with. Like, I don't care if anyone calls me that, but it's like, I feel like this also goes along those lines. Do you feel like in America, if you start calling someone a nickname, you kind of get their permission first? Yeah, like you got to test to make sure that that nickname is okay. Yeah, it's I'm comfortable for them. Whereas yeah. here I find like you just automatically start calling by the nickname. Like it's a lot more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Like so funny enough, I haven't had any like nicknames like or anything mm -hmm. like that that actually stuck except for one over here, mm -hmm. which is kind oh, of is it funny. a good one? Oh, it's, <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing when he called me it. So um, Anzac Day, Mark and I went to a dawn service and there's this older gentleman there who was in the army and we were talking with him for a little while. Mm -hmm. He found out I was from Pennsylvania and he's now, we're still friends with this guy. We talked to him oh. regularly. He's another writer. That's so but cute. But he calls me Amish. That's my nickname now because I'm from Pennsylvania. <laughs> All of the Australians are like, what does that have to do with anything in the world? Well, in, in Pennsylvania, there's a lot of Amish people. Mm -hmm. um, Good old horse and buggies and Amish hair country. and caps and whatnot. Okay, I mean, not that's not insulting. I guess it's just interesting. No, it's just funny. It I thought you were gonna be it. like a spinoff of your name. <laughs> no, no one's called me anything like that. They know not to call me Katie. But Katie's not my... What do you like when people call you? Uh, Caitlin or Kate's normally fine. Oh, okay, like that, okay. But like Katie is just like. But like even then, like I would never like mm -hmm. say intro this video and be like, mm -hmm. oh, Kate's here, because mm -hmm. it's like I feel like I would ask for your permission yeah. first. I feel like if people with like our names, stuff like that, generally get asked in the states too. Like, mm -hmm. do you go by Ash or Ashley? Mm -hmm. That's a big mm -hmm. common. In yeah, the yeah. States. Yeah, they're like, oh, do you like Caitlin or do you prefer to get called by something else? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, of course, I'm so thank happy you for having me. Then we got to collab again. Make sure to yes. go check out the other five that we chatted about for probably much longer than we should have on her channel. <laughs> and make sure to give this video a big like, subscribe again, head over to Kate's channel. <laughs> See, even that, it was like, that feels weird. <laughs> Gotta ask your permission first. Yes, you better ask <laughs> permission. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.